Good afternoon. My name is Greg Robinson. I am a enrolled tribal member with the Chinook Indian Nation. And today I've been asked by the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde to do some short video clips of the types of things um, we teach in the Lifeways class in Portland. And so today I am going to just go through a simple face drawing, my layout, and I'll talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing and how I do it. So if you look down here at the bench, you see a number of these faces. These are the faces I'll kind of be showing you today. They're different sizes. They have, sometimes they're just straight flat. Sometimes they're rounded. Um, there are a lot of different face styles for this, for the Chinook and art form. This is just a style that I've used a lot and I'm pretty familiar with doing, so that's what I'm going to show you. Everybody's welcome to use this design. Um, so we'll just get right to it. So here I've laid out a circle. I've just used a, an old CD and the little center parts just to show, give me an idea roughly where the center was. And I've drawn two lines and I call these master lines. And that, those are the reference lines that you use to make sure things are even. Um, generally, I start my eyes to be slightly above center. So here I've made a couple of little marks, just eyeballed a couple of little marks, and then I'll do some light sketches so that I kind of like what the arrangement is. So I've drawn the top of the eye here, and I'll set my nose in so that I get an idea of where the bottom of the eye socket comes in. This is, and these are just rough, quickie sketches. They'll all be straightened out with um, templates in here in a little bit. So now that I've done my top and my nose, I'll kind of just draw in this bottom arc. All this does is gives me a kind of a visual cue where I'm going. So here I've just sketched in these bands. This is a real common feature in Chinook and Art. Um, these little lower bands and also this kind of um, accented top eyebrow ridge and then the heavy nose bridge as well. Um, there's a lot of different eye treatments. This is just a style that I've used a lot. These rather hollow eyes and then sometimes I'll put a I'll put a zigzag in here. Just to kind of help break up that large blank spot. So anyway. Uh, mouth shapes the same way, just a lot of different shapes you can do. I prefer serious looking mouths as opposed to smiley mouths, but um, the art form and the artifacts, there's a lot of examples of both ways. So generally I'll just kind of draw in a neutral, kind of a serious looking mouth. And then above the eyes are these rays. Another real common art feature with uh, this, this style of art on the Columbia River. Now there are some numerical rules with this art form, threes and fives. Threes and fives. And they're referenced a lot in the stories and the songs. So it's not something you have to be super strict about, but it's a good thing to employ when you can. So here, for example, there's um, three of these red lines here. And this one has one less line, but you can look at it as one, two, three um, spaces. Like I say, it's not set in stone, it's not something you have to do, but uh, I like to encourage people to use those when you can. You do see that being used a lot in the old art, and um, so I think it is important to do when you can. So now that I've got an idea of it, and I kind of think that's okay, then I'll grab a circle template, and I'll hunt for um, 
one that comes close to the size of that arc. And so it would be this one. I put my glasses on. So I'm going from the, my starting dot there and I'm going to go down to my, my line here. And just draw that in. You can do the same thing. I use the same size circle template to do the bottom. And it kind of runs into the sidewall of the, the nose here. So that would be the next thing I'll do is I'll go to a large one of my largest size circles, draw this nose line in. And then a lot of times I'll use that same circle to do these arches above the eyes. You could sit here and space these all out very carefully if you wanted to. I kind of just eyeball the space. I've done so many of these faces that it just I just kind of look at this face here and draw them. So now that you've more or less got one side drawn in with the circle template, I'll use this line ruler. These line rulers are something I use a lot because this line carries all the way through and you got these solid lines that are all the way through here so they can be used a lot like a T-square. So if you line any of these lines up with your master lines you can stay square to your drawing. So I want to start carrying a couple of reference lines over to this side so that I can duplicate accurately. So I'll start with this top plane right here. So I'll pick a line, I'll line it up on the master line, come up here close to where the top of the arch is, and just draw a line across. I'll do the same thing down here. And I guess I should put this bottom eye template in, circle in. And I'll carry that plane over as well. And then I'll come down here and do the bottom of the nose. It's the same thing. I kind of like to leave a little bit of room here on the cheeks because I tend to dish those out to develop a little bit of a facial feature and raise these cheeks up. So I like to leave a little bit of room down here without getting too close in this section right here because I also want to be able to scoop that out. So just use the ruler to draw a line. Now I can carry this point over to this side doing the same thing with the ruler. And then I'll use a divider. Again, always coming from your master line to measure things. I'll measure to the end there, transfer it over here, and now I can duplicate accurately this line. Like so. So now by using the same circles you used before, which sometimes I can't remember which ones I use, so I always double check to make sure. So now I can do this side and I can go from this point and just barely touch this top reference line. And you know that wherever that ends up, it's going to be correct. And now we will do the nose and carry it over. So I'm going to draw this reference point and carry it over here using the T-square method. 
and a divider. So now I have the equal point there. I'll do the same thing down here at the bottom of the nose. And now you have your two points to carry this arch accurately. Now you have an accurate nose and I can work on this line next. So the same thing, you'll carry these two points over to this side of the nose by lining up your little T-square ruler here. This one's already got a line there. And using the divider again. No, actually, no, never mind that. So, we have a starting point here. We have a starting point here. And we have our reference depth lines there. So we'll find the same template size, which is that size. So again, we're going to line up with here and here. And wherever those two come together, when they come together like that, they'll be accurate on the other end. And it just runs up to wherever it hits your eye. And now we'll carry the next line down. You can see this one runs out just to this line so we can go ahead and just use that. But again this is the reference line so you don't even need this point. We're going to go from this point to this line. And I'll go up here and I'll carry these points over to the other side using the T-square ruler strategy. Let's go from the point here to this point down here. And you always want to kind of take back and look because it's easy to get confused with some of your lines and your your arches and make sure everything looks to be square. If all these scribble lines bother you, you can erase them out of your way. Um, as long as they're not confusing to you, you can leave them in place and carve. And that's how I draw my typical faces. Um, now if I wanted to round it like this, I'll cut this out square and then I will bevel all this down. You'll lose a lot of these parts of your drawing and you have to redraw them back in. But it gives you a nice rounded shape and um, if that's what you're after. These will be pendants for Grand Ron, some of Grand Ron's giveaways, little gift giveaways. And uh, so in the next video clip, I will be doing my process for carving these faces out. And like I say, you're welcome to use any of these designs. Um, I don't have any claim to them. These are all based on the old artifacts and I don't own them. So if it helps the creative process to use these, then and go for it. All right, we'll see you next time.